Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Would you sleep with sick women? I may be pregnant, but I'm still a man. Spank the unruly ones. It's indecent, it's vulgar, it's blasphemous. You're gonna ride you till you can't stand up. Come on, come on, let's go down. All right, all right, keep your shirt on. Love Line's meant for an adult audience. Love Line may contain sexually oriented content. Listener discretion is advised. Here's Love Line with Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla. All right, he's right. I'm Adam Carolla, that is Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Fax number 310 854 4455. Dr. Drew is a board certified physician and addiction medicine specialist. It's not one of these uh, effing radio love shrinks. Thank you. He's a very serious man who's immersed in his work. And let me tell you how immersed he is in his work. He's so immersed in his work, he doesn't have time for the show anymore. That's true. God, I've been overwhelmed this week. What's going on? It, Drew? It's busy sometimes. Oh. Yeah. The deal is, no. I, I really, look, Listen. it's not yeah. fun for me. Look, no, look, I hey. know it's not fun for you. It's not I, fun for anyone around you. Have you have to understand that, that I You have, need to relax. I need to practice. You understand? I need to practice medicine, too. And right. occasionally that gets <laughs> overwhelmingly busy. <laughs> yeah, and I know. So? But, Drew, here's what Drew says in every one of his interviews. If I take a week off of medicine, I'm totally behind. I don't know anything anymore. The technology moves at uh, such a <laughs> rapid pace these days that if you get yourself out of the fray, no, that's no, it. Uh, you know, it's not you even so much that it's 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 like being a it's being a plate twirler and and you know having a fine tuned skill and you back away from it for a while, mm-hmm. you, you get behind it. Right. All these other uh, TV and radio quacks seem to pull it off just fine. Well, guess what? I, I feel differently. I really do. And if you if you're if you're practicing medicine, you just have to be available. And sometimes it's right. overwhelming. Well, I've talked about this before, but you know what? Yeah. You should have gotten to dentistry. <laughs> There's something you could have read a textbook from 1937, and you'd be completely up to date with today's technology. There's a cavity. You drill a hole. You stuff some crap into it. You uh, give the guy a sucker and charge him a bunch of money. Is the deal? I'm I'm making you anxious. I've been so overwhelmed lately. I'm upsetting you. Well, it's like every night you roll in here, oi, oh boy, oh, I got no sleep, I got to study, I got a lecture tomorrow. Huh. That it, disturbs you. I'm no, sorry. I was thinking about you today, Drew. You got to learn to relax. I, I'm able to relax, but not when I'm working. And you talk about how society puts those uh, manic people up on pedestals. Obsessive compulsive. Yes, yeah. you are being obsessive and compulsive, and, uh, and it's got to end. Slow down a little bit. Thank you. It's not so bad. Gee, it hurts when I urinate. I've got these lesions. Oh, I'll relax now. All right. Thank are you. Are you scared if you relax, you'd go insane? You don't like yourself, right? No. no, <laughs> no. You don't like yourself, no, do you? No. They, they probably used to be true, but that's not the case right All now. Right. It, it's that I have all these responsibilities that I just don't feel right about completely relinquishing, and sometimes they beef up. All right. Well, you're getting paid to do a job here, so let's do it. All right. All right. No. Uh, here's what we're doing tonight. Uh, Mike Joyce and Andy Rourke are in here from the Smiths. Now, the Smiths broke up uh, 10 years ago, and Mike and Andy are in town, that would be Los Angeles, because they're having a uh, Smiths convention, and that's uh, Sunday, 2 to 11 p.m., and it's over at Hot Rocks, and uh, we'll give you all the details about it, but they're going to be there signing autographs, and they're uh, auctioning off uh, like a... um, one of Morrissey's boogers, and they have all sorts of stuff and all sorts of memorabilia, and it's uh, so all the crazy Smith fans can go out and uh, check that out. But they'll be in here in just a few minutes, and we'll get into that with them. All right, you ready to go, Drew? Yep, let's go. Put all the outside I'm reading doing, material under the desk. Adam, let's do the show. I'm organizing, pal. Delf- Delfina. Hello? You're 13. Yeah. What's your question? Okay, the other night I was, like, passing by my parents' room. Uh-oh. And I heard them, they were like, um, it sounded like they were having sex, but the thing is, my dad's 71. Mm-hmm. How old is your mom? She's 46. Mm. And I don't know, I'm just like freaked, I'm like, what the there, you know? All right, uh, Delfina, mm. yeah. I'm hanging up on you. No, 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 don't, 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 because this is actually... Uh, uh, she used the F word. No, 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 but look, this is a, this is actually a pretty traumatic thing for young kids. I, I don't care. You're on the F and radio. You can't just use the F word. All right, all right. I can't? No. Oh. I didn't know that. That's interesting. What the hell kind of planet are people being... I'm, I'm, I know people are just being shipped from other planets. You didn't know you couldn't use the F word on the radio? 
All right. 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 Now, look, it, it, thank God she's 13 and not like 10 or 11 because it can be a lot more problematic. Yeah, it's no th- big deal you, at you, 13. You, it's a big deal, but you have to begin to cope with the fact that your parents are not these idealized humans, that you, these uh, godlike figures that you suspect them to be or uh, anticipate, uh, insist they be, and that they're humans and they are married and they have sexual relations, and that's the way it is. Oh, what do you care? God bless him. You know, if he's he's virile and healthy and able to do that, that's wonderful. It's just tough to think of your parents that way. That's all. Okay. Delphina. Yeah. What? What's up with you? I don't know. Huh? I don't know. I, I, I just. Your your dad had you in his late sixties. No, he. Was... <laughs> his late fifties. Yeah. And uh, who is this uh, woman you call mom? She's my mom. Uh huh. And how long have they been married? Oh, okay. Like and do you have like a like a sister who's uh, 64? No. No. Well, actually, I have a half brother. How old is he? He's 35. He's a year older than my mom. Oh, that's a little weird. I know. Like I tell everyone, and they freak out. Well, your dad's a virile guy. Is he healthy? Does he uh, play sports? Is he active? Yeah. All right. He's an active guy. He's also active in the sack. You're worried he's going to have an aneurysm while he's having sex, or is it an emotional thing? Well, I don't know. A little bit of both for her. A little both? But, but I'll tell you what. It's uh, a good sign. It's a good sign. It, it really it's is. It's a little bit intrusive into your world that they would put you in the position of being exposed well, to this. They but, closed the know. door, right? All right. All right? It's their house. They closed the door. They had sex. All right. All right. One day, God willing, you'll be getting it on. When uh, you're covered with wrinkles and uh, you'll be destroying the mind of your young 13-year-old child who happens by the door. Okay. All right, Delphine, you'll be fine. Okay. All right. And he will be too. Yeah. Everything else good? Um, well, yeah, pretty much. I'm getting a vibe off of yeah. her. Well, she's angry and a little depressed, but what 13-year-old isn't? All right. No uh, incest, uh, rape, physical abuse, alcoholism, anything like that? Kind of like, I kind of do acid sometimes, but okay, kind of don't do that. That especially at your age, it is it is absolutely categorically destructive to your brain. Okay, do you no understand no that? And that. you are a person who thinks uh, saying the f word over the radio is fine. So you need all the brain you can salvage at this point, right. Delphina. Please, okay, come on, you you'll, you'll screw yourself later. Don't do the acid. Okay, all right, wait till you're older. <laughs> Well, seriously. Yeah, it's certainly not as damaging then, but it is quite quite a, a concern. Oh, I can't imagine what I'd be like walking around today if I did acid when I was 13. Oh. I mean, forget about the physiological stuff or the chemical stuff. I It would just be the biggest mind F ever. I wouldn't know <laughs> if I'd done major damage or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you'd be blaming everything on that. Yeah, as it is, you know, sometimes I'm driving around and I'm thinking about too much football and too much boxing and too much head trauma. In my life. Yeah. And I'm wondering. Oh, that's She's wondering what the hell I yeah, did to maybe, myself. Maybe that's it. Oh, shut up, Drew. Maybe that's it. John, 19. Hello? Hey. Well, I like that doing? explanation. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> hey. It Help, helps, me, helps me cope. No, it's better than getting, like, whacked on the head with a rake. At least it's a manly sport. John. Hi. What's going on? Uh, my question is that uh, my girlfriend is pretty late with her period. She's, like, uh, three or four weeks late or something like that. And uh, I think about weeks ago or something like that um she actually she had it and then it stopped and then so then she's not late then she had it well no she didn't she didn't have it it, it was kind of like uh spotting or i guess whatever they call it mm-hmm. it just came and then it went away real fast right but that and, uh, that might have been her period oh well he's going to get to the part where they had unprotected sex oh. go ahead john yeah yeah well um well i heard that that kind of stuff happens to like that happens to you if you're pregnant. You, can't. you can have you can have spotting when you're pregnant, but did okay, you have unprotected? It unprote- doesn't only happen to people that are pregnant. Did though. you have unprotected sex? If you have unprotected sex. Did you have unprotected oh. sex? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, so there's a risk of pregnancy here. So certainly it is a, a viable concern. What do you What are you doing? Are you pulling out? Yeah. Well, see, the thing is, like, um, before after she had her last one, we we only had, oh. like. Her last one, or her last period. Her last period, right. Oh, okay. She finished with that. You thought you meant her last pregnancy. Oh, I was about to kill John, but go ahead. (laughs) No, um, yeah, we only had it, like, uh, I think, like, one time, and the thing is, I wasn't really close at all before I pulled out. There there is plenty of pre-ejaculate, flow to a sperm that you put out. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, Let me tell you. Some guys put out a lot of it. 
and let me tell you something. Uh, this is not, uh, it's not, a, it's not an exact science, this uh, pullout. I mean, it's not as if you're running for the elevator, the door's closing, you know how many steps it's going to take to get in, you slide in and the thing closes behind you. It is uh, more like uh, there's uh, oatmeal coming in from the sides. You're basically diving in. You're going to get some on your shoe. You're going to get some in your hair. It is not an exact science. Most guys have the uh, pre-seminal fluid or whatever. There's a lot of leaking and, yeah, and yeah. Um, dripping going on. What's going on, Drew? I don't, well, I don't know. There's what, a weird sound in here, is What is going there? on with my mic? We it keeps know. turning it on and off. Oh, okay. Well, because it's screwing up somehow. All right, but listen. Um, it, and plus... By the time you, you know, let me tell you, usually, you usually fire off a, you know, a tracer bullet before the, before the real lead starts coming out anyway. I mean, uh, you don't necessarily feel the first one. Know what I'm saying? That's true. Now, I'll tell you what, women can have irregular periods for many reasons. This may be just normal for her to have irregular periods. Just the concern that she is pregnant is sufficient to make somebody skip or be late. But you've got a situation here where there's a reasonable probability of pregnancy. It's been more than two weeks since you had the contact. Get a home pregnancy test. Find out if she's pregnant. Yes, just because somebody has some bleeding along the way doesn't mean that was the period. It could have been the period, but it also could have been first trimester bleeding of a pregnancy. All right. And uh, this, let me put this reminder out to the kiddies. We have uh, Veruca Salt in here next week. Squirrel nut zippers, guys I like very much, and uh, Pavement will be in here. And also, me, uh, tonight, later, we have uh, What's Left of the Smiths and let me put coming in, Mike reminder. and Andy. If you do have unprotected sex and there's any possibility of pregnancy, there is always the morning after pill. Thank you very much. Right. The uh, best kept secret in Hollywood this uh, morning. Post-coital contraceptive. Oh. You can take oh. overall, low overall, the morning after, up to 48 hours after, really, oh. and decrease the risk of pregnancy by about 70 to 80 percent. This uh, information with this number should be on everyone's uh, phone right above 911 or the fire department or whatever those stupid stickers are. Steve, 30, you're on Loveline. How are you doing? Good. Good. I got a question for Dr. Drew. Yeah. Dr. Drew, um, any relationship between diet and herpes outbreaks? Uh, well, I, I know Drew's answer. Drew's answer is no, because um, doctors aren't really into diet. I, I'm not sure. And, and by the way, uh, as far as they're diet, into medicine, uh, you know what I'm into, though? And, and, uh, and I don't know why this is more talked about is exercise. Really? Exercise is so much more important than diet and for everything. Right. If I, I take care of leagues of elderly people and the ones that stay well and feel well the longest are the ones that exercise independent of diet okay that. It's, it's, then it's less no tobacco no alcohol that sort of thing all right what but here's the deal uh, almost anything can can precipitate herpes in some individuals uh, almost any change in your normal patterns any stress any change in the soap you use potentially changes in diet people have advocated lysine things like that it's not a strong issue in when somebody gets herpes outbreaks, but some people are more sensitive to all sorts of input. All right. I, uh, I have a list around here somewhere. Uh, I'll say it later. I had this uh, great idea on the show, whenever it was, Drew, where I was talking about putting sterilization properties in certain foods, such as Mountain Dew, <laughs> in order to keep the uh, undesirables uh, weeded out of uh, the population. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like putting down a certain kind of poison that uh, only, only uh, certain vermin eat. Mm-hmm. It reduces the population of that uh, vermin. Yeah, yeah. So I, I had a list. I did a little bit uh, earlier this morning, but uh, I have the list around here somewhere. I'll see if I can't dig that up. It's not only uh, it's not only the Mountain Dew, but the Clamato and the Sunny Delight and uh, <laughs> Clamato. Where, where have we been with that lately? Uh, I miss Clamato, a Beef Motto as well. All right, Steve, you're fine. All right. He well, is. Yeah. Well, what's, what is oh, what is know. your deal? I'm just curious. You, do you have herpes? Happies? Of Co- course he does. Let me tell you something well, about this, well, too, well, by the way. What will affect your herpes outbreaks is antiviral medication. If, you need, if you're having frequent outbreaks or having severe outbreaks, there are very effective antiviral drugs out there. All right? All right. All right. Uh, how's Liz Taylor's noggin doing? I haven't heard. I know she was preparing for surgery. Yes. Why? She got it today. Oh, did she? I don't yes. Know. Which meant she'd have to take her wig off, or I guess they just work around it. I don't know. This Liz Taylor, I can't believe she wasn't put in the ground 20 years ago. I have never, uh, Evil Knievel hasn't been to the hospital as many times as Liz Taylor. What is up with this woman? 
Um, I believe there's an emotional property here, Drew. A very, very strong emotional side to this whole thing. Well, I mean, she's talked about her addictive diseases. Yeah, but I mean, this woman has had, you know, she's had three hip surgeries. (laughs) I don't even know how that happens. I thought you only had two last I checked. Sometimes when people are prone to addiction, they tend to go for surgery because they get opiates. It's a weird attention thing. Oh, and everybody, oh, boy, we hope she's going to be fine. And I say to everybody, what the hell are you so into Liz Taylor for? I mean, BFD, the, the, the woman made a couple of movies 20 years ago. Well, and they're like, she was an icon for a while. But here's generation. their answer. Come on. Here's the answer. Gay guys love Liz Taylor. And their answer is always the same. I always say to them, what do you care about Liz Taylor? Seriously. Basically, she's got a, she's got a dog that lives better than you do. She... Uh, Somehow she spends her entire life re- reclining, yet has to go to the hospital every other week with an injury. What do you care about this woman for? And they go, she was so beautiful when she was young. <laughs> and it's like, oh, okay, that's it. All right. Well, I thought it was something stupid. I see. She was attractive. Well, there you go. Yeah, Shelly Winters was quite a looker in her prime. No one gives a rat's ass about her now. She's uh, a great lady, though. Who? Shelly Winters. She is? Yeah. Saw a Poseidon adventure last oh, Oops, saw Poseidon adventure last night actually and there where? was uh, there was Shelly in all her glory. Erica nineteen. Hi. Hey. Hi. I was just calling um actually I had two questions. I had one for you and one for Doctor Drew. Go ahead. But um I my boyfriend is seventeen and I'm nineteen and I don't want to have intercourse with him because of the statutory rape thing. What state are you calling from? Uh California. Yeah. I don't, that would not be statutory right in California. No, and besides, they never convict women for having sex with guys unless they're teachers, and then well, they try I to get them to kill their like husband. I thought his mom would look at me as like an old slut or something. And his mom may have issues <laughs> with you being so much older than the son, but but as Wait I understand, a minute. It, so much older. She's well, two older, years. Older. She could, they, it could be well, eighteen months or something right, for all we know. You, you, no, it's, I'll be twenty before he'll be eighteen. Yeah, put it this way, he is a senior in high school. She's a sophomore no, no, in college. He's, he's a sophomore in college. Oh, he is? Yeah. Actually, he called your show about three weeks ago. Yeah. And um, it's the reason why I was calling was basically because I didn't want to have sex with him because he wasn't 18 yet. And we've oh. had oral sex before, but I don't want oh. to go down on him anymore. Oh. And so he You starts... cannot take that away from a 17-year-old guy. <laughs> that is like trying to uh, wrestle a, a rawhide chew away from well, a pit bull. I feel bull. really bad because, like... Oh, that is torture. You I should feel, feel bad. I feel horrible because... Like I still let him, I still let him do it to me because <laughs> he's really good at it. And yes. Like he called your show, and and now he keeps saying I don't. He asked me to. He told me to call you and ask what this means. But what does Machschmail mean? All right, that is a German word meaning like hurry up or something. Oh, okay. Get to it. Hey, but listen, Erica. In California, if you are over sixteen you can have somebody within three years your age and it not be statutory rape. Plus, I don't care what age you are. If you give oral pleasure to a 17-year-old and then cut him off, you can be sued in any state <laughs> of the union. This is a, he, he could really kill you, and there wouldn't be a court in the land that would convict him, Erica. Do you understand that? And the only reason he's going down on you is because he thinks he's going to get a little something in return. Well, yeah, and like Dr. Yes. Drew had told him that... Oh, he, you're evil. Dr. Drew thought, you thought that he um, was making a fake call because because he said that he had a really long tongue, and that's the truth. I always I call him Gene Simmons because he has a really long tongue. All right. Really? So, yeah. and all right. And you're making fun of him, and you called him Gecko Man, and now he's all mad and won't listen to your show. And I said, oh, yeah, I'm sure Adam's really heartbroken over that. But. Yes, uh, tell him to kiss my ass <laughs> with that tongue. Tell him to go catch me a fly with that thing. <laughs> so what, what is the deal? What can we do to help you? The other question I had was... Hey, uh, listen, you tell that little SOB that I, <laughs> that I yelled at you for not going back down on him. Okay. All but, right. My other question I had was that um, last July I had a really violent miscarriage with an ex-boyfriend of mine, sure. and ever since then, every time I have my period, it's really painful. Like where uh, I can't even get out of bed, yeah. and I and I vomit a lot, and yes. I have really bad headaches. Oh. I get like really bad depression. Have you? Where I'm have you almost, s- I just wondered if there's like a medication or something. Yeah, the pill. The pill. Yes. Well, when I got pregnant in the first place, I was on the pill. I understand that, but the pill would help. I. I suspect you have endometriosis now as part of all endometriosis? this. Endometriosis? Yeah, you got to you got to talk to a gynecologist. You okay. really do. This is uh, a lot of things here that could be going on, but that's the most likely thing, and that's something that can be treated. And you shouldn't you shouldn't just assume you have to suffer through that misery. It's treatable. And I'm guessing the violent miscarriage with the old boyfriend has flavored 
the uh, sexual conduct in this next relationship just a little bit. Sure, why not? Because a lot of, you know, she said, well, I don't, I don't want to violate the law. I'm 19, he's 17. And yeah. we both kind of went, oh, this is a first. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, two minutes later, I had a violent miscarriage some months back. Right. And you go, oh, by the way. Oh, by the way. Yeah. And you go, hmm, I wonder if that factored in. See, just when I'm about to give someone total credit for, uh, for being new and innovative and um, uh, having uh, the conviction of their morals. Paul. How you doing? Hey, you're 20. Hey, how you guys doing tonight? Yeah. Um, got a little bit of a problem. Um, my fiance and I broke up back in November after being together for about three years. Um, I guess it kind of boiled down to she wanted to get married a, uh, as soon as possible. All right. Um, whereas I wanted to put it off for a little bit, um, wait till we're both um, financially capable of supporting each other. Right. Now she didn't agree with this, and she broke up with me. All right. Good. What? Now at the beginning. When we first broke up, I figured, oh, well, maybe it's for the better because she's obviously not mature enough to deal with that kind of relationship. But now it's starting to hurt a little bit. And I just, you know, is that normal? Yes. Yeah. How long ago was the breakup? Uh, November. Of course. Oh, yeah. Of course. It's, and it's, this it's is a, your first love. Yeah. You have yeah. to grieve this. I mean, you have to. If you don't grieve it, it will come around as a depression at some point and really disturb you. And that may be what's starting to happen now. Yeah, but you've got to feel the feelings of loss. You can't shy away from them. If you don't feel them now, you will. They will be delivered into you later. Do you, uh, Paul? Do you pleasure yourself to the what? thought of her? <laughs> Why? Uh, not, not really. No, I don't. No, you know. don't. No. That's a very good sign. Um, He's out of the woods. You're not <laughs> whacking off in the woods. <laughs> You're all right. You're out. Yeah. She also, of course, she also had a problem with the fact that um, I wouldn't lose my virginity with her. Um, that, that also played a part in it. This is a I conflicted think. relationship. You had all kinds of stuff going on. You had well, no, uh, no so business she, getting married. She wanted to get married, but you didn't want to lose your virginity until after you got married and you, you wanted to postpone marriage. Yeah. What is this, a religious thing? <laughs> no, it's just um, kind of a personal guideline. <laughs> really? Yeah. Let me explain something to you, Paul. Okay. You have a penis, do you not? <laughs> your virginity yeah. isn't squat. It's a liability. <laughs> do you understand? Uh, let me tell you what virginity is to a male. Look, it's very cool if he wants uh, to maintain all right, it. It's Don't, very cool. If you but, want to know why to maintain it, listen to this show for an hour, and you'll see what kind of crap happens to people from getting involved with stuff before they're ready. All right. Uh, there's some half-baked advice. But here's what I want to say. Virginity to the male is is like uh, you being in the desert, and um, someone gives you uh, a huge gold bar. It's just it, it's worth $10 million, and there it is. And you're in the desert. But you're in the middle of the desert. You'd gladly trade that gold bar for a Snapple. And you just tug it around on your back for everyone to see, and they just laugh at you as you as you go deeper and deeper into the sand, and your mouth gets drier and drier. It's really, it's kind of cool. It sounds cool, but it really does a guy no good. <laughs> it really doesn't. And unless it's some sort of retarded religious thing, I'd say lose it. All right? But it's best that you broke up with her because it would have never worked out. You got started when you were 16 or something. Are you kidding? All right, when we come back. We'll have Mike Joyce and Annie Rourke in here of the Smiths, and uh, they'll be talking a little about the Smiths and the uh, upcoming projects and the uh, 10th year um, breakup uh, memorabilia show and everything under the sun involving the Smiths and other things. Meanwhile, as the faceless evil closes in on the hapless sleeping populace across town in a shanty one bedroom, an old woman feeds her parakeet. Come on, Chirpy, have some cheese. You love cheese. Since when are you afraid of cheese? Love Line will be right back. I'm Angela. Shark Scott. And we're the Wild Colonials, and you're listening to Loveline with Adam Carolla. And Dr. Drew. And get a life. <laughs> <laughs> Drunken Scotsman in here. I love the Wild Colonials. I don't know if you guys are uh, hip to that band or not, but uh, good music and uh, real good people. All right, uh, Mike Joyce and Annie Rourke are here from the Smiths, and uh, they're here to talk uh, amongst other things about the uh, convention. Yep. After all, it's been uh, 10 years since the Smiths have broken up, and uh, you guys are in town. 
Uh, it's going to be on Sunday. Yep. It's going to be uh, 2 p.m. to 11 p.m. That's right. And uh, what's going to go on at this convention? Well, <laughs> there's numerous things. Hold on a second. Uh, go on. See that big bulbous thing? <laughs> yeah, it's a microphone. Yes. Right, okay. You've used those before. Yeah. Uh, it was, uh, yeah, there's so many things going on there. I mean, just looking at the thing here, it's uh, Elliot and Ray, the two guys that have organized this, have, uh, have really put a, quite a good deal together. I mean, <coughs> when I spoke to Elliot first and he said about coming over, and uh, I just thought, well, if it's just, if we're just going to turn up and, uh, and be there, then that's not really enough. We really need to... You know, make it worthwhile for people to come down and have a good time. Right, because there are uh, quite a few Smiths fans, uh, I'm guessing, especially uh, especially in this area, but all over the world. And uh, have you, you guys haven't done anything like this before, right? No, well, um, I went to uh, one in Manchester. That was uh, it was at the Hacienda, and I turned up there, and it was just a riot. So uh, I didn't realize just how crazy it was going to be. So if it's if it was going to be done on this kind of level, it had to be done with uh, just more interesting things happening, really, than just you know somebody turning up and saying, "Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I was in the band." Right. I don't think that's uh, that justifies people paying good money. Right. To come and see me. And they're having. Uh, speaking of you, they can win dinner. With, yeah. But uh, do you know what the second prize is? It's two nights with me and Andy. <laughs> now, now let me let me tell you. I always I, I've never done anything like this, but I always picture it when they say, "Go backstage, hang out with the band, go out to dinner with the band. You'll be touring yeah, with the band, the just though. like you're they've in the band." Pay, they've got to pay for the dinner. <laughs> that's, that's you guys the, really gonna be sitting the at the catch. same table and talking oh, yeah. to these yeah, people? Well, maybe not. Maybe we'll be sitting like on a couple of tables away. But you know, they, they could shout <laughs> and then we'll let we'll let on. <laughs> also, uh, you're gonna be auctioning off uh, rare memorabilia. Yes. Now, what, what kind of? Give us an example of a few things that you may be auctioning off on Sunday. Well, I've brought over a, a snare drum that I played on the, in the Smiths. Mm -hmm. A track called The Boy With The Thorn In His Side. And uh, it's sit, just sitting there gathering dust, really. Right. And I thought, well, you know, I mean, if somebody wants to have it, then go ahead, you know. Now, how do you know where to... St do you start the bidding at something like that? Well, that's like something that? that we talked about today, because it's not really a money-making venture, although, you know, I mean, I didn't come over here just, just for the fun of it. But it's not... The idea is not to, you know, set out a market stall and just flog things, you know, that's, that wasn't the idea. I just thought that if somebody, these are the kind of things that, if I was, when I, when I used to kind of be a, a big fan of bands when I was a lot younger, uh, I mean, just kind of getting like a, a jacket off him or a plectrum off him or a pair of sticks off, off whoever, right. was quite a big deal to me. So the idea of owning, say, say like, because one of my uh, big heroes is uh, Charlie Watts from the Stones, if I had one of his snare drums, I'd, I'd, right. I'd be so chuffed, Salamite, I think, okay. you know, well, I, you know, maybe we're not obviously not on the level of the Rolling right. Stones, it, but well, yeah, but a big band. And if you're saying if you had Charlie Watts' snare drum, you would auction that off as well, right? Yeah, no, no, uh, okay, not quite. <laughs> All right, All right so uh, let's talk Smiths, uh, the history for a second, if it's not too uh, painful for you guys. Uh, first off, uh, Morrissey, do you hate the guy's guts? You never no. want to talk to him again? No, no, do you talk to him? Uh, yes. What kind of guy is he? Is he is the most he's, bizarre guy in the world? He's got black hair and he wears jeans and he's uh, he's just uh, a very funny, uh, clever, good songwriter. Oh yes, uh, as you might have heard, he's he's just a good bloke, good good person to be with. But let me ask you this: Is the uh, people's impression of Morrissey? is a uh, strange, quirky, somewhat uh, reclusive uh, guy who's, uh, uh, you know, at, abstains from sex. and That's, that's all... me. That's me, that is. That's you? Yeah, I'm, I'm that one. You don't have sex? No. No. All right, we'll get you Not late tonight. Not at the moment. <laughs> but the point is, is, is he as weird as that uh, on a personal level? Uh, no, no, I wouldn't say. Well, I mean, I don't know. Is that weird? Well, he appears weird to, to the outsiders, yes. Well, I mean, because of, I've known him since before the group started, I've, I've probably had a, uh, quite an interesting insight into right. him. So, I mean, yeah, he's, he's not a regular guy. He's not a regular bloke that you, you, uh, that you meet on the street. He's quite eccentric. Right. Eccentric. All right, that's a good word. That's when you're, when you're weird, but you got a lot of money, you're eccentric. And uh, when you're weird and you're poor, you're just crazy. <laughs> that's, that's, how that, that's how it works here in the states. That's how it works. All right, let's take some calls. You guys can uh, jump in and help us out with some of these, and uh, we'll be talking about the solo projects of uh, Andy's and all sorts of other stuff as we uh, move forward here. Uh, Cindy, 
Cindy? She's on the phone. Listen. Cindy? She's on, like, the other phone or yeah. the other line? Could just yeah. about here on the extension. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's that. Is, what is this tonight? What happened in the money run out? <laughs> Jason, 20, you're on Loveline. Yeah, I just wanted to make a comment uh, about a call that you had a little bit ago. You said uh, the relationship wouldn't have worked anyway because he was 16 when they started. That's and, right. Uh, I'm 16. No, I was 16 when we got uh, together. We're, I'm 20 and my wife's 21. We have three beautiful girls. Three. Oh, my God. oh it's doomed. <laughs> doomed, do you tell me? Four against one, happy. it's not fair. Completely happy. <laughs> uh, Jason, we're just playing the odds that, uh, you know... The, uh, I, I understand that, and, and half the time I agree with half the stuff you say. And I <laughs> half, all right, that's only, stuff. that's only a quarter, you moron. <laughs> but listen, uh, it's it's not that people can't be happy or can't have successful marriages at a young age. It's just the odds are against you when you right. do that. And, you know, you're 20. You're still you're still very young. At 35, this may look entirely different to you. We're... we're talking about relationships that really do successfully last a lifetime. That's what we want to see. How do you have three kids by the age of 20? <laughs> They're one, two, and three years old. Oh. Wow. Ah. You got a job, Jason? Yeah, I'm about to open my own business. Oh, hey, good luck. What, what do you do, like a left-handed store or something <laughs> that's going to fail miserably? Uh, no, I install stereos. All right. All right, you'll make a killing. Oh, thanks a lot. All right. Stop having kids, though. I'm done. That's quite enough. <laughs> All right. Good luck, Jason. Uh, you guys married? Uh, any children? Yes. 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 Two. Two children? Yes. All right. Th- thought two you meant two wives girls. for a second. And I've got two as well. All right. And I'm married. And everyone's happy? Oh, yeah. Okay. Really? Yeah. You know your children? Um, yeah. That's just quite, quite a novelty here on Love Line. These guys aren't a rock band. They're imposters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What happened to the rock band? We thought we were going to have a band in here tonight. <laughs> That's better. Yes. Please try to vomit on Dr. Drew before the night's out. Again. <laughs> Christina. Hi. Hey, you're 18. You're on the love line with the Smiths. Yeah. Um, okay. Here's my story. I've been dating this guy for eight months now, and uh, we're really totally S- Speak up, Christina. I can barely hear you. Okay. Um. Yeah, we're really serious about each other and everything, but he's got he's got a problem. He's got like a little man syndrome, and um, I, I I don't know. He can be kind of. Is he little or is his little man little? Both. 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 And oh. It doesn't bug me at all, and I try to. Well, I used to try to tell him. I I figured out now, just bringing that makes him feel bad. But. How does this manifest? How how, how does this syndrome manifest? What are you observing? Well. It's like he's into manly sports, but he's really feminine. And when he's around his guy, his guy friends that are all bigger than him, he just talks big, and it's really kind of annoying. And and sometimes he's even mean towards me. All right, let, how tall is this guy? Uh, five, eight. Not That's that, not small. Not short. Well, <laughs> okay, <some stock> <laughs> not no, short. Mike, how tall are you? Five ten. Like, Five, five. And by the way, a lot of guys do that sort of thing. Get him some high they, they, heels. They do, yeah. they, they're embarrassed at their feminine side. Around their male cohorts, they hide it and defend against it and uh, overcompensate. Exactly. You but, know, but that, you that's nothing to do with him feeling small. That's just yeah. what guys do with that. I age. have no feminine side because I have too much hair on the front and the back side to actually have a feminine side. But, but he's, he, we should be more intimate right now, by now, right? I mean, he should be more caring, and but he... He, he acts kind of mean towards me at times. He'll talk down to me in front of his friends. He'll call but me. Al- always in front of the friends, though, right? Uh, yeah. And sometimes this is a bravado thing that a lot of guys have, especially when they're uh, 18, 19 years old. They're trying to be cool with the uh, the blokes. Yeah. Man. Yeah. And uh, they put on a different. Uh, they put on a different. You ever see that movie Grease, Christina? All right. Now, remember that in that movie, John Travolta, he was all in love with Sandy, and then he got around all his buddies in the uh, T-Bird gang or whatever that, that, that stupid gang he ran with? Yeah, yeah. And then it was a totally different guy, right? Yeah. And then he got away from him, and he was back to Mr. Nice Guy. So I should put up with it. I should deal with it. No, I'm saying you got to teach well, him how to sing. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not exactly put You don't have to put up with him. I mean, Hold it on, Mike. Mike. It doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't really sound like a, a real problem. I mean, it's... Uh, it, like the guys were just saying then, it's something that I think most of us do, you know, depending on what uh, situation we're in and what scenario that is around us. 
You know, it's uh, and it, it takes a little while for guys to learn how to act and how to behave yeah. in the the do's and don'ts of of ladies. I mean, it really does. Lord knows. I mean, I'm 32 and I've barely got it down now. When I was 18, 19, I was a mess. I mean, I. As it, I just learned that farting on the first date is wrong, Drew. Can you believe that? Somebody told me that on the way in. Yeah. I think you're focusing on how he is around other people, though. What I'm concerned about is, is how he kind of keeps it up while we're just... All right. Oh. Well, you're just going to have to confront him in a, in a, yeah. in a non-confrontational uh, <laughs> way. If, just tell yeah. him, honestly, what you think and tell him it's because you like him and you want to keep the relationship going. And, and if he is unable to put down these defenses then it's not a relationship worth staying with. Yes. You're not going to get anywhere with it. When you cut him off sexually, he'll straighten right up. Drew, why don't you uh, sell the hell out of the uh, next well, song? I was just going to talk next. to one of, the, <laughs> one of the fans of our guests. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right, and we'll hear uh, something from uh, Smith's uh, old and, uh, and the solo projects as well when we come back. Hey. The voices are trying to John. throw me off while, they're tr- while I'm trying to concentrate John. on this. Okay, you're safe. Thank you. Love line, I'll be right back. Love line, 1-800-LOVE-191. Fax number, 310-854-4455. Sitting here with Andy Rourke and Mike Joyce of the Smiths. Uh, they have their uh, 10-year memorabilia auction uh, dinner and uh, General cl- clam bake going on. Uh, that would be this Sunday. That's February the 23rd. 2 to 11 p.m., and that is at uh, Hot Rocks. It's uh, 121 North Citrus in uh, Covina. And you guys uh, may not be familiar with Covina, but it is the garden spot of the United States. Yeah? No. Good. (laughs) There's nothing going on there but your convention, but that's fine. You guys go in there, you make a few bucks, you shake a few hands, you sign a few breasts, and you're back uh, over the pond. Hmm. Sounds good to me. (laughs) It's not a bad gig. All right, so uh, what were we talking about during the commercial? Uh, uh, the doors and uh, Jim Morrison. But what did you ask me right before I uh, hopped up on this uh, microphone? Do what? You asked me something right before I started. About the, it was about the doors. Did I, oh, about the, the grave. No, yeah, yeah, Jim Morrison's grave in yeah, Paris. Yeah, in Paris. Never been there. Oh, for, they've got, um, oh, excuse me. That's all right. Flipping heck. They've got, a, they've got a police guard around it because people just come and... And just chip away bits of uh, bits of the stone and like every day. Graffiti and stuff like and that. There's right, like a yeah. copper sat on the uh, on the headstone there, yeah. like oh yon yon yon, with his cigarette, and right, just like trying to nick bits of soil and digging down it's and trying to get stone edge. Well, it, it's uh, it's kind of interesting how some people uh, just sort of remain musicians or songwriters or poets, and others yeah. become sort of uh, deities. Uh, and what I wonder. It, sorry, in the same graveyard, the Chopin, and like nobody. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> oh, now Drew's pissed. Crying Chopin's in the Incredible. same graveyard. No one goes over there. Nobody you see gives that? a toss. It's disgusting. <laughs> well, let me tell you, if Drew uh, went to the uh, graveyard in Paris, he would be, uh, he would put a... I'd head over to Chopin. You would, wouldn't yeah. you? And what would you leave there at the Chopin? Nothing. Oh, okay. Oh, sure. Maybe just a little pride? Just footprints and memories. There you go. <laughs> a demo. All right. So, uh, what, Drew, you're pointing? Well, I was erasing something because I thought you were going to the phones. No. Oh, it is? Well, what the hell is at Hot Rocks? The producer, Ann, just told me. It's at the Pasadena Convention Center. What am I, going insane? What is that, Drew? Yep. I'm reading the wrong thing? All right, listen. Scrat- Ticket, tickets and raffles. Oh, okay. For this convention. All right, where's the Pasadena Convention Center? It's on 300 East Green Street. It's uh, near the, near the uh, Civic Auditorium by the Pasadena Mall. Yeah, and uh, while you're out in Pasadena, stop by Drew's house and uh, pull a Brody on his lawn. No, uh, thanks. Don't do vomit that. Vomit in his mailbox. Do not do that. And uh, feel up the children. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Drew hates that talk. All right, uh, we'll take some calls, and uh, we'll get back and talk more Smith stuff and uh, all that stuff. Teresa, 15, you're on Love Line with the Smiths. Hey, hello. Hiya. Hello. Hey. Hello, this is me, my friend Jojo. We're Hi. just calling to say we love your music and we respect it. We and grew up with the Smiths. Our, we have older sisters, and we've always listened to you guys. And not grown up yet. We have a lot of feelings for your music. Well, oh, that's lovely you. to hear. Thanks very much. Are you going to come on on Sunday? 
Oh, um, yeah, we're definitely going to be there. I got the tickets a long time ago. Yeah, Did you? and I have one question for you. Um, I really love your instrumental song, Oscillate Wildly. Is that how you pronounce it? Oscillate yes. Wildly. Yeah. Oscillate, yeah, it's a beautiful song. I just want to let you know. We weren't sure how you pronounced it, though. Oscar Wildly was a playwright. And to oscillate means to go quickly like and side to side, doesn't it? Wobbles about, isn't it? Mm. All right, you're going to be there on Sunday? Definitely. I right, bring lots of money. Okay. All right. Just, uh, <laughs> just playing it safe. Yeah, you know, the thing that strikes me about the Smiths, I've always been a fan of the Smiths. Uh, a, but it's a, it's a band that a lot of people get divided over. There are people it's that love them all, love them. Absolutely, yeah. and oh, it's not—it's right. not that way with a lot of bands. Like you take, like yeah, but a, I'd rather—I'd rather people were like that rather than just saying, okay, yeah, they're all right. I'd yeah. rather have that it's kind bad. of feeling, either instill hatred or instill, instill masses of loveliness. Absolutely, because it means you're doing your craft, your art, and when no, you're it, when you're become, pushing the envelope a little, that's what it inspires. Yeah, well, it becomes like a debate—a a debatable thing. Because if Morrissey uh, wrote a song where uh, the, some of the subject matter was quite uh, risque. Well, you know, people would say, well, I think that's disgusting. Or somebody else would say, well, I don't think it is. I'll stand up for what that is. But at least the subject matter is something that's worth a discussion. If popular music can't do it, what else can? Absolutely. That is my question to you. Yeah. Uh, no, and, and the Smiths are definitely innovators and uh, definitely, I guess, ahead of their time in a, in a sense and uh, made music that didn't sound like they were copying another band that came before them. No. All right. I'm done kissing butt. We're moving on. Brandy. Hi. You're 15. Um, I'm a virgin, and um, in the near future, I could, like, have a chance to have a threesome, and I don't know if it's healthy for, like, my first sexual experience. Well, I don't... I think you should start with uh, four guys. I mean... Are you coming to the no. convention? <laughs> no, it's two girls and one guy. Really? Yeah. For your first uh, time? Yeah. And then it's all downhill from there. I think Brandy would be very disturbing for you. I mean, yeah. usually the first time for women is not the most pleasant experience anyway. And to have it to be such an overwhelming situation, I, I think, would be very unpleasant for you. I, I, I think in general, uh, threesomes are not a great idea for people. They end up being a big disappointment. I mean, some people have successful experiences with it, but it typically ca causes a lot of feelings that you don't anticipate having. And recognize, Brandy, that when you have your first sexual experience, you are going to be very emotionally connected with that person you have that experience with. And that's, let that's, me, that's hardwired into women. That's what happens to you. And let me tell you this. Your first time doing anything, I mean, your first time surfing, you don't go to the pipeline. Yeah, it's got to be special. It, when you the waves are 20 feet high, you're going to get destroyed. I mean, uh, you don't what I'm... You be sharing it either, you know what I mean? It's yeah, crazy. and you don't want to bite off more than you can chew. I mean, it's tough enough, so pardon the pun, cool. yes. It's it's tough enough just uh, having a, a decent time out the first time out with uh, one person. Not a good idea. No. Well, is this, is this something that you want to do? Is this? I, I, I missed the beginning. I'd, um, she has an opportunity for it. You have an op opportunity. So, is it something that you actually want to do yourself? Yeah, I, I think I. Yeah. I'm sure what for I the want. first? Uh, but you, you're still a virgin. Yes. But you want to do that for the first time? You, for the first time of having sex, you want to have a threesome? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Slippery yeah. No, there's, there's, there's nothing wrong with it, but I just think, you know, it's uh, try it with one first. It's it's pretty good fun. Oh, okay. And, you know, I mean, if you want to go, kind of go on from there, then why not? But oh yeah, but where do you go from a threesome at fifteen Four. as a, as a virgin? I mean, yeah, uh, well, this uh, also be beware. I mean, again, we, we are talking as men here, uh, expecting young women to have the same experience of their sexuality as men do. Women have a wholly different experience, particularly at that age. It's much more emotional, mm. much more connected, mm. and can be much more troubling to them if they don't get the kind of emotional need, emotional uh, content back from the man. Yeah. Right. I, by the way, was speaking as a woman, and I believe Andy was too. So, Drew, do not assume. Hello. Carmine. Yes. Hello. Hey, you're 24. You're on Love Line with the yes, Smiths. Yes, I am. Drew. Yeah. And Adam. Yeah. I just want to say first, you guys are the best. You have the best show ever. Thank you. And you're doing a great service. And second of all, I just wanted to call and talk to Mike and Andy and tell you guys that you guys are the all-time best band ever. Thanks. Anybody who doesn't like the Smiths has no taste. It's that simple. <laughs> and I, the big question I'm wondering, uh, just what are you guys doing now? Are you in any other bands? Are you doing solo stuff? And the bigger question, uh, with the big reunion trend, is there any chance that the Smiths fans are ever going to see a, a original lineup reunion with the Morrissey? Well, to the last question, probably no. Um, Sammy Hagar is going to be fronting the band, yeah, but oh there Lord. will be a reunion. Yes, <laughs> that, that wouldn't that wouldn't work. <laughs> and the first question, <laughs> Big Mouth, the strikes again! Wow, wow, baby. 
<laughs> yeah, and the second question, solo projects. Andy? Yeah, I'm in, I'm, I've started a new band with uh, Gary Whelan, the drummer from the Happy Mondays called Delicious. Um, um, we got a, a CD which came out in England about three, four days ago. And uh, we're going to play something off it tonight, are Hopefully, we not? Yeah. yeah. Well, why don't we, uh, can we play that now? Yes. All right. Let's All right. do that. This is uh, this is great time. What what's the name of the song we're playing? It's called Sitting on the Throne. And it's from uh, Delicious, and it goes a little something like this. Yeah. 
sitting on the throne from Delicious, Andy Rourke's uh, new solo project from the Smiths. Also, we have uh, Mike Joyce in here from the Smiths, and we'll be talking uh, more to them after this. I don't think they're aware of how much they suck. Hey, that's not very nice. You kiss my mother with that mouth. I mean, your mother. That line will be right back. Mike from the Smiths here, Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew from um, Molly Hatchet, and we'll be back in 10 seconds. This is Loveline on Radio Station. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191, fax number 310-854-4455. Show's Loveline, I'm Adam Kroll, that is Dr. Drew, Andy Rourke, and Mike Joyce are here tonight from the Smiths, and uh, we're here to do a little uh, plugging on the uh, Smiths convention. It's uh, taking place on uh, Sunday. It is the only one that you'll be having nationally. Yes. Correct, at least mm-hmm. uh, here in the States. And uh, it is Sunday the 23rd. It is 2 p.m. to 11 p.m., Kind of a long haul for you guys. And uh, it'll be at the Pasadena Convention Center, which is uh, 300 East Green Street in um, La Habra. Now it's in Pasadena. I was just, uh, just kidding. Seems strange to overstate that. <laughs> All right. And uh, they'll be giving away raffle tickets. Uh, it says uh, there'll be uh, live Smith's music. Yeah. What's up with that? Yeah, live Smith's music on the video. <laughs> oh, okay. Live, live right. in person. Somebody putting the tape in and pressing play while we're there. But it'll be. F- uh, there's a lot of footage. It from is, yeah, it's there was a, a couple of tapes that I've got. One from um, when we played the Hacienda in Manchester with uh, Johnny Marr singing backing vocals. The one and only time that that occurred. And also there's a, a tape that we did. The sound guy that was working with us, a guy called Grant. He it's did uh, footage, isn't it? Yeah, it's just all, all just all those just kind of pissing around backstage and just messing around and mm-hmm. having a bit of fun, really, rather than you know the official video, you know that that. that but one, yeah, that it's not the produced one. and edited stuff. No, no, no. No. But it's stuff that uh, probably hasn't been seen before. Well, it's by not, people. no, because it was just a, it wasn't even released. It was just a personal home video. copy. It's a home video. So yeah. right. Yeah, so yeah, if, if you're you know. if you're a Smiths fan, you'll definitely uh, oh, yeah. find that interesting. Oh, yeah. All right. And if not, you may have a passing interest in it. Let's say you're just working the convention security. Yeah. You might look at it. Yes. Oh, it's a long day, you know what I mean? So. <laughs> Kristen, 18, you're on Love Line. Yeah, hi. Um, to begin with, um, I wanted to say on behalf of my boyfriend and I that we both think your show is great. Thank you. And um, I had a question for Dr. Drew. Yeah. Um, I wanted to know what occasional use of LSD um, does to the brain. You've mentioned it vaguely. Yeah. Uh, problem, the, the reason uh, I would be vague is that we don't really know at what point somebody would have caused a significant problem. Mm-hmm. In other words, what is the threshold after which you're likely to have problems? Okay. Uh, certainly any use before the age of 15 is associated with chronic mood problems. Uh-huh. Uh, certainly more than 70 hits of acid is associated with personality changes, problems with abstract reasoning, and chronic mood disturbances. Uh-huh. Whether one or two or five or ten hits can do the same thing, we don't know. And by the way, that doesn't mean you still can't be successful. Many guests we have uh, in here on the Love Line, uh, <laughs> present company excluded, <coughs> have had uh, their bouts with uh, uh, drug abuse, and yeah. they're still selling lots of records and doing, uh, doing great. They're not quite sure where they are. They, uh, the some they you have to make a lot of money because once your brain goes, you need a bunch of lackeys to sort of point you in the right direction. <laughs> Get on the plane, sit yeah, down. Here's out. here's a vomit bucket. Yes, yeah. inhale. Yeah. Oh, 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 sorry. Now exhale. Yeah. Right. Oh, it's yeah. tinkle time. <laughs> but Why, they Cri- still get along just fine. Why, Kristen? What's up? Oh, not much. I just um, you've mentioned it vaguely before, like I said, and uh, yeah. I was just wondering. I've used it occasionally, like once every couple of months, and not. Yeah, I, I would beware. Yeah. yeah, if you use it once or twice, you're probably okay. I Using th- it regularly, you're probably not going to be okay. I, th- I mean, I I sort of did it early doors, you know, as as a youngster, and I. Th- um, I found it does uh, frazzle the old brain cells. It yeah. does. Yeah. yeah, and the other thing is that some of the some of the manifestations don't even develop until ten years later, particularly the mood stuff. Wow. How, how old are you now, Andy? 
I'm 33. Mm -hmm. 30 several. And uh, you did it, you experimented a little when you were... 16, 15, 14, 15, 16. Really? Yeah. yeah. And uh, how many times would you say you've uh, done acid or mushrooms? Mushrooms, oh God, I did it every day for about three or four months and at the end of it I, I had a stutter, you know what I mean? I couldn't speak at the end of it so like, I thought, you know. Right. Call it a day, so. But you're uh, clear and level-headed now? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> Relatively. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> as much as I it am. takes auction off memorabilia. Mm. Uh, here's my theory on uh, drug abuse. I know Drew can't stand this, but uh, listen, if you're sort of a, you know, what you call like a 40-watt bulb, don't mess around with it. If your light's a little dim in the first place, it's going to get a little dimmer. Yeah. And here's what I think drugs do. I think they make, they take uh, bright people and they dumb them up a certain degree. Now, you know, Timothy Leary had 180 IQ, so now he does a bunch of LSD and he has 135 IQ. Still a smart guy, just not a, not a genius anymore. But the problem is there's a lot of people out there with a 95 IQ that are doing a lot of acid, and now you're going into the retard. I mean, you are actually crossing the line in getting into being a retarded person I'd, at this I'd, point. I'd, 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 I think that uh, with all the drugs that are around, that people seem to be uh, the, the kind of new designer drugs that are around. I mean, from my own personal experience, I think acid is probably the safest drug. No, that, it's, uh, it's, it's one of the no, most no, no. dangerous. You, you, well, you, you can I walk mean, into any psychiatric hospital in, in any country. It depends and on who's taking it, though, doesn't it? No, no not at no, all. It, it, it's purely a dose phenomenon. You've it's, got it, to be it, in you, very you, safe circumstances, and uh, no, it has nothing to do with mm. having a bad trip. It, the people most it's it the fact that it's fact the people it's the people that we worry about most that continue to have good trips because they keep exposing their brain to it. Then ten years later, they end up in psychiatric hospitals mm. chronically because really? their, their moods really don't respond to treatment. The way, right. the way a, yeah, but a I mean, how much, how much acid do you have to take before that? Happens? That's what we don't know, and that, uh, that's what I mean. And I mean, for some people, it might be ten hits. It's certainly anything over sixty, seventy hits, and it's certainly any use before the age of fifteen is highly right. associated with. And this. I think if you're doing it like, like you say, every couple of months, that's too much. You you're getting I mean? there. You're you're put, certainly putting yourself at risk. You're putting yourself in harm's way. Right. Uh, you know the. There's one that's really new right now and real commonly used is ketamine. It's coming out. Yeah. All of a sudden, last couple of months, boom, elephant, it's back again. Elephant tranquilizer or something, isn't it? Well, it's a dissociative. No, they actually use it in adolescence sometimes, but but uh, we don't know what the long-term effects of uh, that are going to be. It uses the, uh, the, the glutamate receptor, which we are concerned uh, when overstimulated is associated with brain damage because that, that's a receptor that so causes something we think we call excitotoxicity. When you stimulate a cell too much, it dies. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Basically, I think that's what's happened to my penis. <laughs> and you take ketamine, you can't stand up. You know, it's, uh, have you, have you tried that? Uh, by mistake, yeah. Oh, okay. I, thought, I thought I was buying something else. Yeah, and it was, you, thought, yeah. <laughs> you, you thought you were getting crack and the yeah, bastard no, slipped I, you some cash? I thought I was buying an ecstasy <laughs> and it turned out to be a ketamine. And, I, uh, and what did it do to you? I went for a dance and my legs didn't work. Really? Yeah. It, it kind of takes you out of your body. You're not connected with your body anymore, basically. But you didn't uh, you didn't suffer any medical complications or anything like that? Mm. <laughs> I'm not, I'm, I have drug. not seen any medical complication of ketamine yet. Okay, but don't worry, it'll show up. If it's just like uh, I In remember ten years, when yeah. X came out, X was legal, X was fine. It was just being used by therapists to uh, uh, stimulate relationships uh, a little bit. It's still used. In, that's what's used in Switzerland now, isn't it? It's prescribed. It's it's not illegal in Switzerland. Doctors prescribe no, ecstasy. No, no, prescribed anywhere because it's known to be very dangerous. What? Very dangerous. What is ecstasy? No, but they, they pres 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 doctors prescribe it. In I don't Switzerland. think they would prescribe. No, they anything. do. It's legal. It it's may be a, legal. A prescription. It, it may be legal, but there are lots of legal drugs that can cause damage. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, most of the drugs we prescribe are very dangerous. Oh. Um, no, in a controlled. But it's the, it's the one that has been shown conclusively to cause some pretty serious anatomic destruction of the brain. Oh, really? Uh, it, the amygdala gets disrupted, and there's new and you know, novel connections between the brain cells in that part of the brain that aren't natural. All and, right. Uh, I'm getting a contact eye here. Right. I can barely think. Just say no. Alex, 15, you're on Love Line. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Drew, Adam, love you guys. And, love you. Uh, thanks, Adam. Anyway, uh, I got a question for Dr. Drew. Yeah. I was uh, born with cerebral palsy, mm -hmm. and I was just wondering if that would affect my performance in bed, you know? I think it'd help it. <laughs> well, how is your cerebral palsy manifesting? Oh, it's it's really minor. It's just in my right leg. Uh, I got surgery on it about you five have, years ago. You have ago. some spasticity in that leg or what? There's just a real minor limp, 
and when I stand up straight, my right knee kind of turns in a little bit. I don't think it will affect anything. Okay. Do you, well, have you found as though it is a problem? Why do you, why do you think it's going to be a problem? I don't know. I just I just I was wondering that a couple of weeks ago. And do, do you do you masturbate now? Uh, yeah. And that's uh, functions normally. Yeah. Well, it sounds all right to me. Which uh, hand do you have the spasticity in when it comes to your penis, the right or the left? The right. Okay. Right. That's all right. All right. I, well, you know, you may want to switch hands every once in a while. It's like getting a new girlfriend. Lasts longer. Yes. All right, Alex, so you'll be all right. Okay. All right, everything else fine? Uh, everything else is fine, Adam. Okay. Uh, do you have any medication or anything you take for uh, the palsy? No. No? I no? Got, uh, right. I've gotten surgery after surgery. and. What do they do with the surgery? It's uh, tendon split tendon transfer. Tendon uh, transfers. Heel cord transfer or something. I don't know. Oh, okay. They cut one of the tendons in my right heel. Basically. Wow. Oh. Sounds like minimal problem. I think you'll be just fine, Alex. All it's right. a, a, Alex, it sounds more psychological, really, than anything at the moment. I mean, I think, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the doctor was just saying there, you know, if you're masturbating, and that's fine. Well, you know, I mean, it's just going to be uh, uh, replaced by something rather better. Right. Like okay. a uh, furry hand. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, not too much fur, hopefully. Yeah. All right, Alex, you'll you'll be fine. But don't worry, you'll suck the first time out anyway. Okay. But don't blame it on the palsy. <laughs> That's just you. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody does a good job sexually right out of the shoot. Uh. They really don't. Andy, what? <laughs> Andy, you were good the first time out. Um, I was. I was. Uh, I was fantastic. You were. <laughs> yeah. I had a little trouble pronouncing That's fantastic. <laughs> Elliot was first. I was shown the ropes by an older woman. So. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. Outside of the family? Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. just wanted to check. Uh, how old was you? 21. And uh, how old were you? 13. Really? Yeah. This kind of stuff Somebody always... Somebody spank me. This stuff goes on <laughs> in, in, in England quite a bit. I, I, I don't know why this sounds well, familiar. Sex. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's weird, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, all those people. Uh, you were 13. Or oh, 14. Yeah. Who was the 21-year-old? Um, just a, a girl. Yeah. Look, Obviously. It's not. It wasn't a neighbor or anything no, like that? Like, uh, Babysitter? Um, my friend's older sister, basically. Oh, really? Yeah. And uh, did she take pity on you or look at you as sort of easy prey? Or what do you think was behind that? I don't that? know. I think, you know, she just uh, took a shine and... She wanted to get a rock song. Did, yeah, she didn't have a boyfriend at the time. Did you, uh, show him did you fall in love with her? Um, I, I think I, I had a bit of a... A boyhood crush, yeah. Right. But now, did... Not for long. Yeah. When she showed me how it was done, then I went off and... Practiced. Sure. Yeah. Did you uh, Did went you have many episodes with her? Mm, a, no, a couple. But enough to sort of uh, cut your teeth, as it were. Oh, yeah, enough to get it right. Yeah. yeah, guys, I really think guys need that, because if you look at it this way... If you're a 15 or 16-year-old guy, and you don't, know, uh, you don't know your ass from a hole in the ground... And you are trying to have sex with a 15-year-old girl yeah, who's never been with someone. Yeah. Then it is the blind leading the yeah, blind. Yeah, I mean, you're yeah, liable to yeah. take an eye out. Yeah. I mean, you don't know what you're doing with that penis. You, you really don't. Someone's going to get one in the, in the nostril. You yeah. don't know what is going on. Barking up the wrong tree and all that. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, thank God they have pornography these days, Drew. The kids can see exactly Diagrams. what's going on. I mean, it's like a, cl it's, it's a clinic these unless, people are putting on. Unless it's one of those NAF electric blue videos. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. You mean the, the, the soft core like, stuff? Yeah, yeah. I, I hate that, and no I hate call. I hate going to a hotel and paying seven bucks for the yeah. uh, Spectre Vision no, and think, getting a uh, cut you, version. You yeah, you have to get, keep on really getting quick. the freebie and taking it off about thirty seconds later, and then you get quite a quite yeah, a lot of the movie. Yeah, but they still cut up the hardcore stuff. Yeah, they, I always think that they have another camera there. No. The, the decent one. See, they do yeah. now. Yeah. I've the, been the on good, the set. The good camera. I've been on the set of the porn movie. Yeah. They do one camera for the hardcore stuff. Yeah. yeah. And the other camera just looks at the guy's brow sweat. Yeah. yeah. The entire time. It's just focused on the guy's forehead. So be honest. Have you guys, uh, when you've masturbated watching pornography, yeah. have you ever... Um, Looked, like at, looked at the forehead. No, no I mean, have you no, ever, you, you, have you ever timed it wrong where you uh, achieve climax right where they showed the guy sweating and grunting, just his whole face <laughs> yeah, taken I, up I the screen? I think I was doing it just at the end of the tape. Yeah, that's a I, big I'm problem. A, I'm a Catholic boy, I don't masturbate. <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry, Ann was whispering in my ear. <laughs> All right, so uh, Drew, enough about masturbating? Yeah, yeah. All right, uh, we're going to play one of my favorite Smith songs in just a couple of seconds, but we'll see if we can uh, squeeze in a call. Jason, 18, you're on Loveline. Hello. Hey. I was wondering how long it takes to get over your first love. Well, you got to kill yourself until you get the next one. I remember yeah. when I was when I uh, first fell in love. I was only about sixty. How old are you? 
I'm 18. 18, I was, uh, I think I was 15 or 16. And uh, I remember getting the bus home after seeing this girl. And I just, you know, I might as well have just been in a, a cell in prison. I just felt so weird. Is that, I mean, is that, are you going through that now or something? No, it's been a, it's almost a year since she dumped me. Really? Yeah, mm. I mean, I've been with other people since then, but... And I, nobody's I, a, it just, nobody uh, comes just, up to scratch? Just, just little, little well, things it, here it, and there. It is but difficult, but you know, the great thing is, and I mean, I'm, I'm 34, so I've got a bit of experience, and it... <laughs> things do get better. I know it's easy to say in this situation where we're not actually going through what you must be going through, but, you know, the, 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 the grass does, get, does grow is again. A good healer, isn't it? Like, but it is definitely the most profound the most form of, of uh, depression yeah. there is. Yeah, yeah because... It's it not, really is. It's yeah. all-encompassing. It just takes over your body. Is this the first time that, that you've, you've uh, you felt like this? Uh, yeah. Yeah. There's just other, just like, little hoes with it here and there and shit. Pardon? Just other hoes here and there, but this is the first All one right. I actually so, love. Jeez, you really know how to treat a woman, don't you? <laughs> well, well, that's what they were. I mean, give me a break. You know, for 10 minutes before they want to go and do it, that's what they are. All right, Jason. Yeah. Uh, thank God you haven't turned against women in general, that this experience hasn't made you bitter. <laughs> Jason, listen to me. Here's the deal. Here's what I tell people, because I went through uh, a year, maybe more, of just sheer depression, and I was not uh, some uh, wet-behind-the-ear 18-year-old. I was like 22 when I was in a serious funk over a relationship. And he, you're going to be miserable. That is my first statement. Let's not lie to the lad. You will be miserable. Here's the point. Do not waste the year that you mourn by sitting home smoking pot uh, eating cheetos and watching too much daytime tv force yourself to participate yeah, in life it has to be done go to school go to work do not waste this because th you don't want to look back in 10 years and say after you're married and have eight kids with someone else you don't want to yeah. look back at this year from 18 and a half to, to 20 and say I just sat there and did nothing. Yeah, but so but, if you're going to be most, miserable, at least do something. And most people do, but uh, the fact that you're actually confronting it now and that you're phoning here, is, I think it's quite a good start. Anyway, the fact that you you want to kind of d sort something out about it instead of just sitting there and not and just thinking, well, that's just the way it is. But you know, it, as I said before, it's easy for me easy for me to sit here and say it gets better, but right. it, it does. But, yeah, but it, as just, well, listen, no, you've got to sort your attitude as, out as well because if you like, it sounds to me like the, probably the girls you've been going, you've been making them miserable as well because you. Oh, you know what I mean? the hose. Yeah, the, you know what I mean? You, you got to sort, sort <laughs> yeah. of attitude. All right, so Jason, uh, it will get better. Everyone goes through it, and uh, this is your turn, and you will come out that much stronger when you're done, or you'll be a broken shell of a man. <laughs> it's one or the other. <laughs> All right, uh, now, for one of my favorite all-time Smith songs, you got it queued up, Mike? Big Mouth Strikes Again. Legend. 
right. Big Mouth strikes again. Um, Cold Noldy from the Smiths, and we'll be back right after this break. I don't go in for these backdoor shenanigans. Shenanigans. Sex, drugs, rock and roll. Shenanigans. Chips, dips, chains, whips. Shenanigans. High school orgy time to think about buying up. Be right back. Shenanigans. 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 Here with uh, Andy and Mike from the Smiths, uh, the convention, the big Smiths convention. And really, uh, ladies and gents, uh, this will be your only time. These guys uh, pretty much hang out in England. They don't they don't come out here that often. You'll not find them again. And besides, they're never going to associate with the public unless, um, unless you come out and find them. Don't bother them at restaurants is what I'm <laughs> saying. Uh, the convention is Sunday. It's a... Uh, Wait a minute, it's 2 to 11, I'm sorry. And uh, it's going to be down at uh, the Pasadena Convention Center, which is on uh, 300 East Green Street in Pasadena. You you really should be able to find it. Uh, what's that, Ann? Oh, it's sold out. All right, so uh, stay well, home. So you'd see, yeah, I see it's at the Viper Room instead on Saturday. Oh, you're going to be in the Viper Room? I think so. Well, why didn't you say anything? I just did. All right. Okay, shut his mic off, Engineer Mike. <laughs> I don't know what you guys do on, uh, in, uh, when you're on England radio, but you don't yell at the host here stateside. <laughs> you're going to be the vibe room, seriously? I think so, yeah. Oh, mic's off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? All right. I'm just hanging out. You know. Oh, just hanging out? Yeah. Oh, are you going to be jamming? or? or no, or? no, just uh, licking. <laughs> no, oh, you're just going to be hanging? Uh, yeah. All right, yeah. well, they're going to be at uh, the Denny's in um, in uh, Covina on uh, Thursday night, and then, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> look, who cares if you're at the Viper Room if you're not going to be up on stage? Yeah, you don't wanna, it, uh, you're going to be up on stage? I care. I'm going to have a great night. All right, so go I to the Viper Room. Yeah. Who are you going to see, I'm the Viper saying, Room? Hey, I don't know. We're just going to go down there and uh, just have a laugh, but I'm just thinking if anybody can't get in there, then come down and say hello. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. See, we're just being, you know, you're just being polite. You're you know, being friendly. Being nice, I'm yeah. sorry. I That's misinterpreted right. that. You're welcome. All right. <laughs> all right. Let's move on. Rick. Yeah, how you doing? 26. You are on the love line with the Smiths. Yeah, I'd just like to talk to uh, Mike and Andy. And uh, I'd like to say that I was always the biggest Smiths fan I've ever known. Cool. And uh, I first discovered the Smiths back in, like, 1985. Yeah. And uh, at the time, everybody listened to, like, Van Halen and Def Leppard and Ooh, stuff like that. Yeah. You know? And, uh, Did your friends beat you up and call you a fag? No, I was. <laughs> Why not? Uh, did, uh, did you ever come and see the Smiths? Nah, come on. I, was, I live in California. The Smiths are the only tour out here. I mean, that's my big regret. I've seen Morrissey twice. The but, Smiths like, it's not the same right? thing, you know? I mean, once the Smiths broke I, I toured here. Do what? I toured here. I toured here with the Smiths. Yeah, the Smiths came once, but, I mean... We came a couple of times. Yeah. Did they come a couple of times? Oh, you missed them anyway. All right, Rick, uh, stop telling the band where they've been. I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> it's, really, it's really a dead end street oh, actually, for yeah, you. I've got a bit of Alzheimer's. I don't remember yeah. actually being here at all. No, you're right. We, we've never yeah, well, why here. hit a place like the United States when you have uh, Puerto Rico and yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so many bigger countries and, and, and places to go to on this map? Yeah, at least if you're in, in the United States, you wouldn't go to California. No. No, there's nothing going on no, last here. last time we came, it was closed. We had to stop off for fuel. And, like, so we right, you just gas up. Yeah, and you stay yeah, on the tarmac. You don't yeah. get out. All right, Rick. Yeah, they have bigger fish to fry than the United States. Yeah, well, you know, of course. But uh, um, I'd like to know if, uh, if Mike still do, is still doing anything with the buzzcocks. Uh, no, I'm not, actually. I'm, uh, I'm working with a guy called Pete Wiley at the moment. Okay. Who, who had uh, a couple of record, well, a couple of big hits in England. Uh, wow. The Story of the Blues. And, uh, and uh, a track you... called Sinful. But um, I'm working with him at the moment. I just did some demos before I came away over here. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. And uh, um, do any of you guys have, like, a favorite Smith song or album or anything? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and what are they? <laughs> Sorry, it was... Uh, I've, I'm a big fan of Rank, the live album, and wow. also Strange Ways, the last album. Yeah. Uh, I think Rank really kind of encapsulated the way that the Smiths sounded live, because I think a lot of people, you know, the miserable tag, and everyone said, oh, yeah, they're really down and and and, uh, and pretty miserable blokes. But I think if you listen to that album, it certainly doesn't sound miserable. I mean, that was just a, a misnomer by the uh, 
by lazy journalism, really. Rank is a great live good, CD, and uh, a lot of the times when you hear live CD, the songs are a little disappointing because you get used to it a certain way from hearing yeah, the yeah. Uh, produced version of it over the radio or on a CD, and then you hear it live and it sort of misses a beat. But uh, this is just as good as the original, or just as good as the produced stuff, plus the energy of like like I like uh, the Big Mouth song better on Rank than right. I do now right. uh, the produced version. A little, I it's a little faster. Studio album. My favorite studio album is probably Queen Is Dead, though. I thought that was that was a good album. Where'd you do Rank? Or was that all over? It's all no. different ones. Kilburn. Wasn't it? Oh, <clears throat> Kilburn National. I thought it was all different ones. Just one jig. Just took one big gig. Yep. That's pretty it was, cool. It was actually That's recorded by the BBC. So I've listened to it. Oh, really? Just for uh, transmission. And then when we heard it, we thought, well, it's good enough to put out as an album for ourselves. Oh. He's our sound engineer, actually. He, like, he, called, he remixed it. He them. called the tapes. Yeah, know. somebody did a real good job with it because mm. uh, for a live uh, CD, it's real clear and real, real nice. Mm. John, 18, you're on Loveline. Hi, this is a question for Drew. Yeah, John. Okay, uh, I was uh, smoking marijuana one night and I, I had done it before and uh, we were in, uh, in the car and just letting the smoke just, uh, what they call it, hotboxing, I guess, if you know. What, and, uh, now, what is hotboxing? It's you just get in the car and close the doors and just smoke until it just fills up with smoke. And uh, we were doing that. And uh, this is uh, well, this is the uh, this is the intellect of this uh, nation of ours. That's why you guys will be happy Sunday when you get back on the plane. Was yeah. that a, big a lot car? of guys sitting and filling cars up with uh, how with big was your smoke. car? Uh, it was a truck. <laughs> oh, that's a big. Pro- you've got a problem. With <laughs> and uh, so uh, I was just sitting there smoking. And I was. Just I, I've brown boxed a car before, but that's uh, that's a totally different that's thing. That's, that's when uh, you break wind. Uh, a brown nose. <laughs> oh, uh, we were uh, so I, I was feeling kind of weird, so I, I stepped outside and I was I was like dizzy and like I didn't know where I was and I was just. That's because you were stoned. That's called being yeah. stoned. Oh, no. yeah. and so I, that's and why I, you I, smoke pot, John, so you get dizzy and don't know where you are. No, <laughs> no well, it was different. I, I started like freaking out, like I was yelling and I was. All right, but it doesn't you, well, you didn't know, no, no, have no, no. anything to do with the way you ingested it, did no, it? It well, just it, had it, to do with it, the fact you were high. It's the dose that he ingested. I have seen mm-hmm. several cases now of toxic psychoses associated with heavy ingestions of marijuana. Yeah, but you're not going to get any more from filling up your pinto well, with whatever. pot smoke Look, than you would by sucking on a bomb. I suppose not, but no, maybe, you, maybe you wouldn't you are, have... No, con- because you're not even going to have a gap in between tokes. Now that you can't control well, it. Well, that's true. You All can't right. control it. You're sitting there, don't you don't realize... that's not the issue, is it, really? It sounds like a guy... I tried to that, smoke in it. I had just treated a patient. In a big room with a window slightly ajar. I just treated a patient a couple weeks ago who came in wildly psychotic. I mean, just it's in a very, very wild, the florid psychosis where, and, and a lot of agitation and yeah, crazy motor activity. Like, don't they? Because of marijuana? Yeah. How yeah. long did it last? Uh, uh, probably, well, I don't know, because it was late night and then... Uh, it couldn't read you. It lasts about six to eight hours in the stuff I've seen. Right. Well, uh... Is it? I was wondering if it's permanent or. No, 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 no. But, but it, it. Uh, I mean, I don't feel, I don't feel anymore. But I, I feel like I'm kind of. I've heard it's called scarred. anxiety attack. So you're still having, pa- you're still having panic attacks. Well, no, no. I, I feel like, I, I don't to touch the stuff anymore or drink beer because I'm, I'm like afraid that'll happen again. It could happen again. Good. Really? I mean, will it, will I have like, as I had a on my brain or anything? I, no. I don't think so, no. no. I don't think it, you have to worry this this will create chronic problems. It, it, it does like you had a panic attack or something. Y- well, yeah. it, if, it, if you do the same thing again, then it might happen again. It right? might happen again, but yeah. it, it's more than... A, I suspect if John has what I think he has, more than a panic attack because they really get disorganized and disoriented. Yeah, yeah. A panic attack, you, just, you feel like you're going to die. It's a miserable experience, mm. but you don't really truly get disorganized. Mm. And the behaviors they manifest with, with these... What I've seen have been just wild. Now, let me ask you this question, Drew. A lot of people cannot handle marijuana. I know a lot of guys and have had a lot of friends that say, I can't do it, I get paranoid, this, I get this weird. This totally different. All right, but we're, changing, we're shifting gears here for right, a second. Right. Those people who say, I can't handle it, I get paranoid, I don't want anything to do with it, I get weird. I start thinking that the, you know, the walls are coming in on me. Is that because they have a sort of chemical difference yes. than a guy who really loves yes. it, or Abs- chem- chemical? Of course, it's the difference. same with beer. It has nothing it? to do with their personality. Yeah, it doesn't agree with some people. It has li- li- almost nothing to do with the personality. Okay. Mm. Still, high-strung people don't do well on marijuana. No. Uh, no. 
it, 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 no. it, you know what? It just no. it's whether you get that opioid effect or not. If you get it mm. and you're high strung, it's good. You you like it even more because it will also reduce some of your well. Maybe high strung people aren't so uh, preconditioned for the opioid effect or something maybe. because maybe. all the high strung people I know cannot handle marijuana. Kimberly, hi, nineteen. You're on Love Line. Yeah, hi. Hi. Sorry, Annie. Yes, go ahead. No problem. Um, I have a problem with my boyfriend, and the problem is, is that he works very odd hours on different days. He's on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week. He's a porn actor? No. No. What does he, he do? He He's does um, bodyguarding. Uh-huh. And he used to do personal security. Just random bodies or these uh, famous rich people? Um, He does freelance, so he does a lot of different things. Uh-huh. And... The problem is, is that um, he usually works night shifts, and sometimes he'll work day shifts. Now, is he a real bodyguard, or does he wear a, a windbreaker with a big number on the back of it? No, he he does he does um, he wears a uniform, and it says like security on it or whatever. All right, so he's like a six dollar an hour guy. No, thirty dollars. How old is he? He's twenty seven. Right. And he's not the guy in the front of the concert, not enjoying the concert. No. You know, it always strikes me about concerts. I, I think they torture the guards because yeah. they will get a guy who absolutely has no interest in whatever band it is they're playing, and they will put him up against Inside the stage, the and he yeah. will sit there leaning up against the speaker in a, in a, in a place that uh, a well, fan would into. kill I've to be to. I've seen him shaking, shaking his fists at me. Just not even tap his foot once the we, entire time. We, we've cut them all in his ears, cringing, going, oh. Yeah. So, Kimberly. Yeah. Uh, your question was? Um, it's just he's always expecting me to always be waiting for him whenever he comes home, just at any time to be ready to take his clothes off, put on his pajamas, get him ready for bed like he's a baby. And he likes me to give him back rubs and foot massages and everything. And even when I'm sick and I've been sick the past three days and he's been working the past three days and coming home at odd hours, and expecting me to do this for him. Do you have to wind him and stuff like that? What's wind? wind? You know, when you get... Like, Baby. Wind him. Oh, oh, uh, belch him. Yeah, or burp yeah. him. I just say wind. <laughs> well, they call him wind him. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Get the wind up and all that, yeah. Uh, Does he so, wear a nappy? And so, Kimberly, he's, he's, he's kind of immature. Well, he's not immature. It's just he thinks that after a long day of work for him, I should be taking he care of him. He wants a mommy. He doesn't want a wife or girlfriend. That's wrong. All? He keeps complaining he doesn't I'll want say, a mommy. It doesn't sound bad. He doesn't want a mommy, yet he's acting like he does. He just likes people to take care of. He wants a mommy. We all want that, I'm afraid. <laughs> yeah, all right. But, he, but he's, that's not a, not a healthy relationship, no. though. All right, be. so what do you tell him? Um, usually I just tell him, you know, I don't like it, but he's always telling me, you know, work comes first. I've got to pay the bills before I can see you or even bother with you. You guys are living together? Um, off and on. Off and on. Because I go to school, so... I'm usually, like, with them on all the weekends, and I'm at home during the week. All right. Just uh, refuse to do that stuff you don't like doing and see what happens. That's well, it's all. not that I don't like doing it. All right. Now, listen. All right. I've had enough of Kimberly. <laughs> she offended you in some way? No, but it's just, though, you know, I, I don't, I, I hate these questions. Well, he I mean, asked me for a back rub. I don't want to give it to him, so I tell him, but he says no. And then we say, all right, well, just tell him you don't want to give him the back rub. Then they go, well, it's not that I mind giving him the back. All right, then shut the hell up and go call someone else's don't show. Don't give him a back rub, yeah. That's right. Just, if you don't want to do it, tell him you don't want to do it. If he has a big problem with it, then you compromise. You know what I mean? You give him a back rub, he gives you a back rub or a foot rub or something like that. Okay? All right. Next. Next. And, uh, Drew, what is the next call we're going to take tonight? I don't know yet. Find something we can gamble I'm, on. All right, let's look at it. We'll, we'll, we'll find something. All right, I promise uh, gambling with the Smiths when we return. <laughs> I began to float up and away from my body. Uh, lady, you better get back float. here. If you're not here when Love Line float. returns, they're going to be pissed. Smiths are here tonight. Andy Rourke and Mike Joyce are uh, in here, and they're doing a thing that I'm not even going to talk about anymore because it's sold out. So 
it's uh, it's a moot point. All right, let's uh, move forward here, Drew. Mario, 27, you're on Loveline. Hi, uh, I have a question for Dr. Drew. Yeah. Okay, I I um I tapped my phone uh, for the past three months. Mm. It's been it's been tapped, and <clears throat> I found out that my wife was having an affair with another person, and um, her last period was uh, November the twenty fourth, and uh, since it was tapped, I knew she had an affair with this person around the fourteenth of. Well, okay, the last time she had she had her period was twenty fourth of November. And I knew that she had an affair on the 12th of December, around the 12th of December. Now, my question is, I didn't have any sex with her. <laughs> are you tapping her vagina as well, or are you just uh, <laughs> checking the trash can for tampons? How are you sussing out this period? Uh, uh, well, I knew she had her period uh, on the 24th of November because she, she's living with me. Well, she was not anymore. But... Um, uh, when she when when she 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 stayed out for about four or five days. When she came back, she called a friend. So, anyways, the point is, I knew that she had an affair uh, between those three days that she was out. Right. What's your question? So my question is, I didn't have sex with her. Her period is supposed to have. She should have had her period again. All right. So you 20th. think the guy she was cheating on you uh, with was the father was the father. Uh, Right. Her period is supposed to be on the 20th of December. All right. We yeah. understand the period, uh, the okay. periodical chart so you're putting her, in front of us. Her breast was, was enlarged. Uh, they, were, they were getting enlarged <laughs> and stuff. So <laughs> I, 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 I had her admit that... This man, are you a gynecologist, Mario, or a family counselor? <sighs> what do you do for a living? You had her admit what? No man knows more about the period than Mario. <sighs> I'm a pharmacy technician. Oh, okay. You All had right. her admit... A frustrated doctor. So th- so the deal is this: she had a she didn't she had a pregnancy test done. Uh, not she didn't tell me about it. So she had it done December the thirtieth. Yeah. So if she would have been pregnant on the twelfth of December, about the twelfth of December, uh, it, would that test uh, come out uh, negative as it did come negative, despite that her breasts were uh, starting to get enlarged by the end of the month, and she's really flat chested and her breasts was just really getting big. And um, very noticeably big. Do you understand the question? Yeah, he's trying to figure out the timeline because I think what Mario is saying is uh, the uh, MacGyver of the vagina, this Mario, knows more about the vagina than any man a lot. He's trying to say that she had a pregnancy test, it came out negative, but and then it pregnant. came out positive later on down the road, it, but he thinks this other guy knocked yes. her up earlier, yes, that, so could y- it have yes. been negative and she still was pregnant? Yes. The answer is yes, Mario. Because it takes a couple of weeks. Right. Yes. Okay, now I want to know uh, what factor does her breast uh, play in all this? Uh, the, uh, well, it's the boob factor. I mean, that's quite obvious. Can that give me an assurance? Is what I'm no, trying to... no, can't guarantee anything. No, that's not going to hold up in court. The uh, the uh, bra the bra defense is not going to work. Lord knows, I've tried. Oh boy, many a court case I've lost uh, arguing the size of breasts. All right, so Mario, are you divorced from this woman? She you separated? Uh, well, I'm separated right now, and the divorce is supposed to be terminated around ten days from now. Okay, I mean executed? It, well, well, it takes six months from the day you file it. Okay, so you have no plans of getting back together with her or her breasts? Uh, no, definitely no. not. But and, you, and she's seeing the pregnancy through to term? She wants to go through the pregnancy. She and claims to. it's yours? She, she claims it's mine. All right, you'll be well, able to test uh, when the baby arrives. Yes, there's simple ways of doing it. You simply Which? dunk the infant in a barrel of water, and then you measure how much water has escaped from the barrel. Then, you then urinate into a beaker. Now, what they do is they'll take a graduated cylinder and they'll compare the amount of urine in the beaker to the amount that escaped from the barrel, and they'll also have the other suitor urinate in the barrel as well. In the barrel, not in the beaker. Not in the beaker. That's where a lot of things go wrong uh, scientifically. Uh, I also have a follow-up question. On, uh, oh, please. On that's similar. Okay. <laughs> similar. Has to do with uh, toxic shock syndrome or what? Breast size, bra size? When when her and I were together when we were married, uh, we agreed that if she were to become pregnant, that uh, if either one of us uh, wanted to terminate the pregnancy, uh, we would. If if she said no, I, I, even if I wanted to have the baby, I, I would have to go. The no would win, in other words. 
Well, that's right. Not, that, and that, he, that also wouldn't hold up in a court law. Yeah. Yeah. And you also said in sickness and health forever uh, right. w- will you last. And that was uh, a year and a half ago. So a lot of things are said. Not many of them meant. And that's uh, her decision at the end of the day, isn't it? Absolutely. Uh, All, right. All right. Mario, Mar- listen, we got we, we to gotta go. Good luck. Uh, better luck in your next relationship. Yeah. And the proof will be in the uh, DNA test. Yep. When the, uh, typing, yeah. when the infant is born. Yeah. Do they have to draw blood from yeah. the infant? Yeah. Here's what they ought to do, quite on, uh, quite frankly. If it is a male, uh, do the circumcision and get the blood sample at the same time. No use traumatizing the child twice. Kill two birds. Yeah, take, the, uh, take what's left of the foreskin right into the lab. All right. Drew, again, the uh, Dr. Drew, a school of radio with the head nod. All right, what song are we hearing? Silent Night. There's a light that never goes out? Ah, from the Smiths. Take me out tonight Where there's music and there's people in the young and the light Driving in your car I never, never want to go home Because I haven't got Take me out tonight Because I want to see people and I want to see light Driving in your car Oh, please don't drop me home Because it's not my home, it's their home and I'm welcome no more The double decker bus crashes into us. To die by your side is such a heavenly way to die. And if a tent on truck kills the both of us, to die by your side, well, the pleasure, the privilege is mine. Take me. A strange fear gripped me and I just couldn't ask Take me out tonight Oh, take me anywhere, don't care, don't care, don't care Driving in your car I never, never want to go home Because I have For that engineer Mike. All right, uh, the Smiths, and we will be back right after this. Why don't you try rapping at this time? Yo, yo, kick some flavor and stuff and love and line. I'll be right back in a minute. Uh, 
sorry, that was really bad. You're just not straight like me. Just a few seconds left with Andy and Mike. Uh, let's talk to Nicole, who's been on hold for uh, 65 minutes. Oh. Nicole. Hi. Hiya. I've been on hold for a while. I know. Poor Nicole. I know. We saw it on the uh, the, t- the screen there, and oh, I requested right. that we get you through. Oh, is it? All right. Well, I'm such a big fan anyway. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I just had to talk to you. Tell the band you love them, and then I'm going <laughs> to hang oh, up on you. Well, I love you guys. Okay, I love thanks. your music. Thanks, Nicole. All right. Thanks. Were you heavily influenced by the Smiths? Yes. Okay. I- I don't want to get into why. Jason, 24. Just want to ask Andy. I think one of the best bass lines of all time has got to be a little song off of our uh, World, uh, the World album that was just released in Great Britain. And uh-huh. I think you know what I'm talking about. It's called Rubber Ring. Oh, yeah, the nice experience. one. Yeah. yeah, nice one. I like that one. You play the bass, Jason? Huh? Do you play the bass? No, not at all. In fact, I love the, uh, the drumming on Strange Ways, that, uh, a song called uh, The Death of a Disco Dancer as well, if Mike could uh, talk about that. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? <laughs> a man with he, taste. He, he was just saying during the commercial he thought he was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I hope somebody talks to me about it. All right, Jason. Well, I'll tell you what, I mean, most of the drumming on the Smiths is fairly restricted, and I think he he went off on that Pelican song. It, it was probably a liberating experience. It was, you're right, actually, but I had uh, my arm in plaster cast for a lot of the Smiths' time, so... <laughs> <laughs> they didn't want to make things too complicated unless, uh, you know, if Mike went down, they could just, uh, you know, get a chimp or something and put him in there, and <laughs> no it, the band knows. could continue to tour. You understand, Jason? Uh, I think I do. All right. Not really. I'll talk to you later. For Thanks, sure. Jason. Bye. Bye. All right. All right. Uh, Andy. Mike, thank you very much for coming in. We do appreciate it. It was our pleasure. Uh, I would plug the uh, convention, but it's sold out. It does. And uh, that is a testament to the uh, power of the band even 10 years after the That's amazing. None of us are dead. And you know what? All right. Now you're all dying. (laughs) That's it. You've cursed yourself. No, but here's the other thing. And we're way out of time, but I want to say this. You're, you know, 33 and 34. The band's been broken up for 10 years. Uh, How old were you guys when you got started? (laughs) Uh. 17 17 yeah. all right so is still having sex with the older broad andy or no, you moved no, on no. okay done, moved thank on. you very much Thanks we will be back there. uh next time uh on sunday dr drew is halfway home by now and uh for dr drew this is adam carolla saying mahalo this has been love line the opinions expressed herein are not necessarily limo service for love line guests provided by fox limousine and it certainly wasn't for me love line producer ann wilkins this broadcast was copyright 1997 westwood one entertainment this music is mxpx on tooth and nail records sit ubu ubu stop dragging your butt across the carpet uh-huh.